So good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, Up Your Game, Marketing Best Practices. Oh, here we go. He just came in. Hey, Gordon. Hello, Gordon. Good morning. Anyway, um, I am going to uh, get started. Um, my name is Jeff Shields. Um, I've been in the uh, high tech industry for, oh, I don't know, 40 years. I took my first computer programming course in 1966, and I've been a Remax realtor uh, as, as part of that. And um, one of the big things in, in, with Remax was marketing. And it was, as a realtor, that was what you had to, uh, had to do, everything if you wanted to succeed. So I spent five years as a Remax realtor and uh, well over 30 years in technology. So um, what I want to talk about today, and I'm going to throw up, a, if, if you are following along in the sh slideshow, um, let me just get this up here. So what we're going to cover today are, are the difference between marketing and selling. Um, what is marketing? How to market successfully? Um, successful advertising. Advertising is a small part of marketing. Uh, marketing on a budget and online promotions. Um, we will spend a fair bit more time on the on, on, online promotions today as opposed to print promotion. Um, print advertising simply because it's uh, COVID has changed how we do things in today's uh, market. So marketing is a set of instructions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. That's a quote from Wikipedia. I like to say it's getting people in the door. Selling is offering to exchange an item of value for a different item. The original item of value being offered may be either tangible or intangible. The second item, money, is often you, seen by the seller as being an equal or greater value than what's being offered. I like to make it a little more succinct. Show me the money. So marketing as a whole is a lot of different activities. So we have branding, you know, that, that's your logo, your business cards, your color scheme, um, the fonts that you choose for stuff that would involve all come under your branding. Um, it includes public relations and media interaction. So press releases, um, public relations, if you donate something to a, uh, a charity for a silent auction or you do a giveaway at a trade show, or any activity where you're interacting with a potential uh, customer, is public relations. Media is your television, radio, print, um, that sort of thing. Advertising, well, we've got print and we got digital. Um, we have audio for radio and we have TV advertising. So those are the four basic forms of advertising. And in marketing, you wanna try and, depending on what your product is, um, you want to be able to spread that out. So the three of you are all involved in the arts in one form or another. <coughs> um, so TV advertising isn't going to be a big part. Radio advertising wouldn't be a big part unless maybe you've got a show going on and you might run a, if, uh, you know, if you're on a tour or something, there might be some radio advertising. Primarily your advertising is to be print and digital and, and, we will spend a little bit of time on that. We're gonna talk about all the different forms of marketing today. Um, essentially, marketing is communications, how you communicate with your potential client base. Um, so you, you want to be able to provide a consistent message. Um, your logo should be on everything. If you don't have a logo, it's really a good idea to create one. Um, 
something, and, and one of the things with logos in particular is to make sure that they're, um, they can be viewed in color and black and white. You don't, you can either have a couple of different versions or if you just create, uh, convert your logo to black and white, it should be readable. Um, slogans and taglines, um, Susan's tagline is, for instance, is from the prairies to the west coast and beyond. Um, a, lots of companies use taglines. Pepsi's tagline, one of them used to be um, for the Pepsi generation. Those sorts of things were memorable sayings that people, people will remember. Um, branding also includes your vision or mission statement where um, those, you know, for an artist, uh, um, a vision might be there. Uh, a mission statement, not so much necessarily. Um, that's really important for, for organizations that are, are geared towards uh, social interactions, so that sort of thing. Um, but your, your, your vision uh, in your artwork and that sort of thing it can, can, will help keep you focused on your marketing. Um, with public relations and the media, you can you know, promote events. If you're in an art show or you've got um, some sort of an event coming up or uh, that's an ideal opportunity to do a little bit of marketing, whether it's uh, through Facebook just or through your website, um, through online publications, through print publications, that sort of thing, even radio. Uh, would work for that. Here, here TV advertising isn't gonna be big. Um, Regina, maybe Kathy, but uh, not so much uh, in the Central Island here. Um, announcements, um, anything that is worth saying. If you've won an award, that's a great time to do an announcement, whether, you know, whether it's a press release out to Island Arts Magazine or the local newspaper, or um, putting it up on Facebook or doing a, an email campaign. Announcements are a very good way to get the information out there. If you've been juried into, a, into an art show, um, that's another great announcement. If, um, if you have a TV appearance coming up, that, that warrants an announcement to get so that people will watch, your, your, watch you on TV. Um, press releases, um, that's the, the, the main format or main mechanism for getting announcements out. They should be... Um, there's all kinds of online tools on the proper format for press releases. Um, the first few will get ignored. I know that when Susan started on, our, on her marketing here on the island, she was sending out probably 20 or 30 press releases before one of them got picked up. Um, because up until, what'll happen, it's sort of like the, the little notices you get in the mail from realtors. You know, it'll say, house listed and you take a look at it or house sold and you look at it and you throw it in the garbage. And after about 10 times you go, oh, another one from Jeff Shields, throw it in the garbage. But when it comes time to sell the house, that name recognition is there. So same thing with the, with the uh, press releases. You gotta get them out in front of the editors um, often and so that they recognize your name. And eventually it was, oh, another one from Susan Schaefer, maybe I should follow up on this. So those can become very powerful um, uh, ways to get out there, but you have to keep at it. You just have to keep sending them out and eventually they get picked up. There's also online services where you can put a press release and it can get picked up from any newspaper in the world. There's a bunch of different websites that offer free um, press release um, promotions. Well, advertising, I touched on a little bit, um, print, radio, TV, internet, direct marketing is mail, um, whether it's email or snail mail. Um, direct mail through the post office can be quite reasonable. You can cover just a, uh, if you, let's say you've got an art show in your home, you can do a direct mail campaign just to the people in your neighborhood. You can pick it actually by postal code. And you can do that for as little as 11 cents, I think. Um, anyway, it's, it's, under, it's under a nickel a piece or under, under 20 cents a piece. So um, I, I think it's a sliding scale depending on how many you're sending. But that can be a very effective way to let your neighbors know about something if you're, say, doing something at the house or maybe your whole community if you're doing something uh, maybe in a little larger venue. Email is a great way to do that as well. 
Um, communications is business cards, website, email, social media, blogs, brochures, rack cards, merchandise. Susan produces a um, uh, an apron with Island Arts Magazine logo on it that she sells at the different workshops that she attends or hosts or teaches for that matter. So little things like that. So you'd see all, all of a sudden you walk into the old schoolhouse in Qualicum Beach and you see people wearing Island Arts Magazine apron. Good. And again, that's another way to get the name out there. So marketing is a, a puzzle and there's three parts to the puzzle. Um, I work with a marketing outfit out in, um, in West Vancouver and uh, I help them on their technical side of stuff and uh, do their websites and that sort of thing. But they, they came up with a, a concept that I really stole from them <laughs> with their permission, of course. Um, they call it the creative triad and it's um, ready, aim, fire. And it's very important that you um, design your marketing plans and strategies around that concept. Um, you need to do all three and you need to do them in the right order. Um, so you need to get your, your campaign ready. You need to figure out what you want to say and, and get all the materials together for that. And you, know, you pick your theme, you pick your colors, you have your branding, you get your campaign ready, whether it's an upcoming show or you want to you know, introduce your product to, to a new market or whatever. Then you've got to pick your target audience, the aim portion, where um, there's not, if you're, if you're doing um, watercolors and that sort of thing, there's no sense aiming it at, um, at people who only buy statues. Um, that might be a little bit obscure, um, but it's important to figure out who your audience is. Maybe it's the age group, maybe it's gender, um, maybe it's an age range. Um, figure out your target market and then you fire. And I've seen people who've, who've got the materials ready and fired them out, but they really didn't know who they were trying to hit. It was like a shotgun blast and they missed everybody. Um, so it's really important to do all three, to to get your materials together, figure out who it's gonna to go to, and then fire off the campaign. Um, put, you need, Remax did a study, and they did a man on the street interview where um, they'd go out and say, did, have you ever bought and sold a house? And people would respond, yes. Did you use a realtor? Yes. Would you ever, would you use that realtor again? Absolutely. They did a fantastic job. What was the realtor's name? Eh, don't know. <laughs> it's true. It, it, five, six years down the road, you may not remember who the realtor was. Um, Remax found in their analysis that you have to put your name in front of somebody 27 times before they, they will remember it. Basically, that's once a week for six months. So marketing has to be steady, has to be consistent. Um, it has to be almost to the point of obnoxious. Um, you get these things in the mail or in direct mail from realtors. And I like using that example because everyone sees them. You know, house just lift, listed, house just sold in your neighborhood. And people just throw them in the garbage. But eventually you'll get, oh, another one from Valerie. Oh, another one from Kathy, another one from Gordon. And then they go, oh, I'm gonna sell my house. So it, it's, it, it is an important part to just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, whether it's Facebook or, or your website or whatever. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So key components of getting ready for your marketing is you got to identify your business and your marketing goals. Um, take a look at your competitors and see what they're doing. So for an artist, take a look at successful artists. I mean, Robert Bateman uh, um, is a great one to sort of see what he's been doing. Robert Genn was a, 
uh, although he's passed away, is, was a, a phenomenal marketer. Um, Susan's really good at marketing. Uh, Mark Hobson is good at marketing. And when we interviewed Mark Hobson for the magazine, he was one of the first artists that we did back um, 13 years ago. Um, Mark told us that when he started painting, he spent 80% of his time marketing, 20% of his time painting. Now he spends 100% of his time painting and he's got a gallery that he owns and five staff members who do nothing but marketing. So uh, Bateman's got two and a half assistants who do marketing. <coughs> so it's, it's important to do a, an analysis of, of um, what your business is. Take a look at your strengths, take a look at your weaknesses, um, take a look at the opportunities that are out there for you and what are the threats to your business? COVID is an enormous threat to the art community. Um, although in the last month, a lot of the artists have told us they've been selling hand over fist, which is remarkable. Susan sold four paintings in one day, uh, two weeks ago. So uh, art is coming back it's a, because it's a feel good purchase. Nobody needs art. Um, so it's always a feel good. People are suffering right now from uh, COVID fatigue and they need something to feel good. And buying art seems to be a really good thing to do. So um, that's an opportunity while, where COVID is a threat. Uh, some people, have, because of their consistent marketing, have turned it into an opportunity. The aim component of marketing is define your needs. What do you, what do you need to get done? What do you need to do about um, your marketing? Um, identify your key target market. So um, with Susan, her demographic is, is um, more or less middle income. Uh, people who, can, who have a disposable income of between 500 and $1,000 a month. Um, you know, so, and then she produces stuff on the smaller end for, for lower income. So basically she's targeting people in the um, 50 to $100,000 income range with her pricing scheme and the sizes of stuff that she does. Um, so that's identifying a target market. Other people like Mark Hobson, where his paintings are selling in the four to $5,000 range, he's targeting a very different demographic. Um, his prints are targeted to, the, uh, to that 50 to, 50 to $100,000 range, but his originals are aimed more at the quarter million plus range. So who is your, who, who is your product going to appeal to? Who is your artwork going to appeal to? Who is whatever you're trying to sell? Who is it going to appeal to? And consider, um, and consider that in your, in your aim. Um, developing a marketing program. So every year, uh, Susan and I would go to Mexico in December for the last 15 years or so, um, although not this year. Um, we would spend our time in Mexico on the beach talking about our marketing plan for the next year. And then when we got home, you know, we'd make notes, we'd have our iPads or our phones with us, or I would have the computer with me, and we'd make notes about what we wanted to do over the next year in marketing. And we would have a calendar of what we were doing. So with the magazine, it's, it's the publishing schedule. Uh, with her artwork, it's the shows that she's doing. Um, Susan applies for shows up to three years in advance. Um, so it's important to be looking into the future uh, we try and work, you know, we work on a, a detail plan for the five years, but we have a, I had, a, I had a, a, um, a fellow who used to talk about marketing in the sense that when you're in an airplane and you're at 50,000 feet or 40,000 feet and you look down, you can see a lot if, if it's a clear day, you can see a lot of the ground, um, but parts of it may be obscured, but you don't get a lot of detail. And as the plane is coming in for landing and you hit 20,000 feet, you can start to see shapes of cars or headlights on the road. You can start to make out uh, the rooftops of buildings and that sort of thing. As you get down to 10,000 feet, you, got, you can't see as much, but you can see more detail. You get to 5,000 feet, 
um, things really start to take shape as you can see individual trees instead of the forest. And as you're landing on the ground, you can see the runway and the, the grass on the side of the runway, but you can't even see the terminal often because it's off to the front. <coughs> so in your marketing, you, when we start out, we like to have a five-year plan, which is sort of our 40,000 viewpoint. Um, then we look at our three-year plan, which is maybe the 20,000 viewpoint. And then the next year is our 5,000 foot or 1,000 foot. And then the month is more into the, uh, as we're landing, as we're touching down. So it's important to sort of look ahead and have a, have a goal. It, it's, nothing is ever cast in stone. Uh, on these plans, but they give you a, a, a vision and a direction that you want to head to. And so having that overall view in your in your marketing program is very worthwhile. Jeff, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Okay. Um, now you said, who is it going to appeal to? Like, um, I haven't had that many shows yet. Um, but one of the shows my first show with the Aurora Guild here in Regina, uh -huh. um, I sold three huge paintings. It was my first show with Aurora to SGI. That's, yeah, yeah Saskatchewan Government Insurance. Yeah, I lived yeah. in Saskatchewan. But, yeah, so I don't really know um, who my artwork would appeal to unless, like, that's, that's a good example, I guess. Like, that's a corporation. Yes. Right. So um, obviously it appealed to a corporation. Yeah. <coughs> so you can think of that as one of your target markets. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and then if you think of what their client base is, everybody in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what were, what were the paintings of? Were they abstract or were they prairie landscapes or? Um, they were, landscape abstract well the one was of clouds it was pastel yeah um the other one was a collage um and it was a, an odd size it was of an abstract um cactus yeah. and then the third one what was the third one i can't even remember <laughs> well corporations like abstract because it doesn't tie them down to anything yeah right to any particular okay. view um, it where they, they were colorful, I would assume. Yes. Yeah. 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 So um, corporations like that sort of artwork and they like the larger sizes because they have um, often they'll have large spaces to cover. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember the third one now. It was it was huge. It was the largest painting I've ever done. And it was white. It was all white, but it had some pale pastel coming out of it. Uh -huh. And that, I mean, it was something that, well, I put my heart and soul into, and I, I loved it. And it took me a day to do it, and which is fine, you know, but it, I was just very excited because these were all three different new kinds of initiatives that I was working on. So, and they all sold, yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations on that. Now, Thank that you. would have been an ideal opportunity for an announcement. Yeah, I suppose, eh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And something to put on social media. So if yeah. you follow Susan on social media, anytime something is sold, she's, she says, congratulations to the new owners. It's found its, this painting has found its forever home. If you're interested in something similar, take a look at my website. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Lots of ways to leverage that. Um, but yeah, you know, so if you start aim at corporate markets, that's a really good place because they will overspend. <laughs> yeah, it was good sale. <laughs> so moving on, our, our third component of the triad, our ready uh, aim is fire. And that's your, your, the execution of your plan. That's where you want to um, make it happen. So, and, and here you want to have integrated campaigns. So if you're doing some, um, if you're doing an email campaign where you're 
emailing out your client base or people who follow you. Um, if you're using something like MailChimp or Constant Contact, um, and there's a number of other applications that allow you to do that, um, they will integrate with Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and um, that sort of thing. So um, you create a campaign and then you can push it out to these other social media sites just with the press of a button. And so having integrated campaigns, if you also happen to run a, a print campaign, it should be consistent with the online marketing campaign. So it should all be integrated, the same message out there. So when Susan does an art show here at the house, um, it may be set up in the backyard, it may be set up in the garage, it may be in, by invitation, which we usually do around Christmas time, where it's in the living room. Um, if it's if it's by invitation, then then there's no marketing other than the invites. If it's um, in the backyard or in the garage where it's open to the general public, she runs an ad in the newspaper. Uh, she's pushing it on Facebook. She's doing email blasts. She's mailing out personal invitations, um, and it's all integrated. It's all the same message. So it's a very um, powerful way to get people in, and she. I don't know of an instant off the top of my head where she hasn't sold something. Um, some years she sells a lot more than others, but that's usually because of the market, not her work. Um, you want to do quality. If you're going to print something out, you want quality. Um, so we, we, we see some stuff that, come, that people send us um, and the quality is very, very poor. And we went to an art show on Denman Island and people had basically handwritten their email address on a one inch by three inch piece of paper and were handing those out as if that would um, make it back out the front door. Um, it's important to, if you're going to do, take the time, do it right. We would talk to artists and they said, do you have a business card? No. Well, how are we ever going to find you? And they say, oh, my art speaks for itself. People will beat a path to my door. Well, not if they don't know where your door is. So um, it's important to, um, if you're going to do any print production, that it's high quality. Vistaprints is cheap and it does really good quality. Just make sure you get the best paper. You know, spend a few extra dollars. Don't try and chintz on, on print stuff. And make sure that you do your campaigns on time and on budget. Um, <laughs> it's no point sending out a press release announcing your art show the day after it's happened. Um, with press releases and that sort of thing, a month before your event. Advertising, schedule that a month before your event. So if you have something happening on November the 15th, on October the 15th, that ad should be with the newspaper and lined up on what dates it's going to print. It, often uh, people wait to the last minute and they can't make the publication on that date and they'll, the newspaper actually prints it the week after the events happen. We've seen that a lot. Um, so, and on budget, if you go over your budget, uh, one of the metrics that you need to be aware of is the return on investment. So if you're spending $100 and earning 10, that's a really bad investment. You don't wanna do that. You wanna spend $10 and earn 100. So when you do your marketing, make sure you're on budget. Um, we recommend that um, for any monies that you come in, that come in, <coughs> you take 10% of that and put it into your marketing budget for the next year. So that when you do your marketing plan in December for, for 2021, you know how much money you have to spend. And plan that out a year in advance. Um, you can always adjust on the fly, but have a plan. So that's sort of the concepts around marketing. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time um, getting into the nitty gritty of, of some of this. And advertising is one of the main components of marketing, if not the main component. 
Um, uh, when people talk about marketing, often they're simply referring to their advertising, where marketing is, is the overview and advertising is just one of um, half a dozen components. So when you're creating your ad copy, um, we look at the five W's, who, what, where, what, and when. So who and what? Hey, how are you? Good, I'm just in a okay? meeting. I'm just in a meeting. Oh, good idea. Thank you. Sorry, Jeff. No problem. Um, you might want to mute your mic, though. Um, who and what? Um, your logo and your business name. Who you are, what you are. Um, if your business logo name doesn't contain what you do, make sure to clarify that in the ad. So um, just putting up Susan Schaefer and her, her phone number or address or email Someone picks that, up, picks that card up somewhere, puts it in their pocket, they throw it in the drawer. Six months later, they pull it out and they go, who the hell is this? What does she do? So Susan Schaefer, fine artist, says what she does. So that when someone picks it up, they know what it is. Or Susan Schaefer, publisher, Island Arts Magazine. So the who and the what. And if, if your logo doesn't include what you do, then you, the copy of your ad, uh, the text in your ad needs to, to clarify that. Why, when, where? Well, every ad needs a call to action. So um, call to actions are just like, call us at or um, email us at or whatever. So something, and email us now, call now. You see these on all the um, TV commercials when they're pushing all these products out. Call today in the next 20 minutes, get, get two for the price of one. Those are call to actions. And every ad, every promotion, everything that you do needs a call to action. So that, that if, if you don't have a call to action, people aren't going to, to, uh, to do anything. Tell people why they should contact you and tell them what you can do for them. And I'll get into, I'll, I think I got a screenshot coming up that I'll share in a minute. Um, additional information that you want to include is what your business does, how you intend to help your potential customer and save money. Call me now, save money. Um, that's one of the call to actions that my accountant has. Make sure they can read it quickly and easily. Point form is the best. And some good supporting elements, good photographs, good graphics, those are always helpful. Um, as an artist, your artwork. So, when you design um, an ad, I think I, I'm gonna, I, let me, give me a half a second here. I, I wasn't thinking about this at the time, but. Um, just give me, just bear with me while I. Okay, I'll, I'll look for that in a minute. Um, <coughs> sorry, um, I, have a, I have a sample of an ad that one of our clients did, which is a, a phenomenal example of, of a, a clear cut ad with call to action. So it was just great. And I think it's in my advertising uh, workshop um, presentation. what I was trying to get to was what makes an effective ad. And um, a hierarchy of information, that is the things, the information that is most important in that ad campaign, um, make that the most important element. Uh, 
whether it's your business name or maybe it's a new location or upcoming event, figure out what's the most important thing and make that the most prominent part of the ad. Um, and every different component should be weighed according to its importance. So um, how important is the logo? Well, it sort of depends what it looks like, what the branding is. Um, the phone number, the website would be of equal importance, so they should be the same size. Um, your address, if it's new location, is going to be more important, so it would be maybe a little bit bigger. But if it's not a new location or a different location or an event location, it can be the same size as phone number and website. So determine what's important in that particular ad for that particular ad that you're running and adjust the sizes and prominence accordingly. And, it can, and you can adjust the prominence too by color, not just size. And it's very hard to read an ad where everything is exactly the same size. So having the prominent stuff bigger and the less prominent stuff smaller is good. If they're equal, you might distinguish them with color. Um, and those colors will be determined by your, market, your, your branding color scheme. So um, branding color schemes, a couple of things. Take your favorite color. Um, you can work your brand in around that. Um, also take a look on the web on meaning of color. Different colors convey different messages. Um, green, if you're in a uh, um, environmental group, is a good color. Greed as a bank is a bad color because it implies greed. So TD's color of their logo is green, which the first impression when people see that logo is that they're greedy. So um, blue is a trustworthy color. Red can be anger or danger. Um, purple is the color of royalty. So um, take a look at the different colors. Colors will have different meanings in different contexts. But so take the context and the color and those can be very effective in, in how your marketing um, is, is perceived. And it's all about perception. Less is more. We always hear that. Um, keep it simple. Um, and I do the KISS principle with one S um, because if you do, you're not. Um, keep it simple, get your message across um, to the viewer in the most succinct way that you can. Um, use your space wisely. Don't crowd things. White space is good. Use contrasting colors uh, for fonts and backgrounds. Make sure your copy is readable. Um, best combo is dark type on a light background because it's easy to read. Uh, yellow on green, yellow on blue, green on blue green on yellow, they don't work. Colorblind people will have a lot of trouble with that. Um, in, in, uh, in website work, we actually have tools that measure contrast ratios uh, that may determine whether, and it'll look at the size of text, the color of the text, and the color of the background. And from that, it determines a contrast ratio. And for a contrast ratio to be readable, it has to be 4.5 or higher. If it's, and it's a mathematical algorithm. And if it's under the 4.5, people will have trouble reading it. Um, if it gets up too high, like say around 10, um, stark white on, on, on the deepest black is very hard on the eyes. For instance, the contrast, that's the highest contrast ratio you can have. Stark white on, on deepest black. Um, so if you go to an off-white on a, on a dark gray, it's easier on the eyes and you still you keep that contrast ratio. So things like that in terms of uh, using contrasting colors. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, hang on, I'm, my throat's getting a little bit tickly and it's not COVID, I'm just talking too much. That's good. <laughs>
Um, <clears throat> fonts, fonts, and fonts. Um, mostly use sans serif fonts, you know, the ones without the little nibblies on the end. Um, and use different font sizes and maybe different kinds of sans serif fonts. They're easier to read on screen. Um, uh, serif fonts are really good if, you, if you've got a book, not so good if in an ad. They're easier to read if you have a lot of text. Uh, sans serif fonts are easier to read uh, without that. Um, don't use too many font types or too many font colors. Um, no more than two font types, no more than three colors in your fonts. I, I, I prefer a monochromatic color scheme on the fonts, um, unless there is something I really need to get across. I prefer two at the maximum. Um, I've seen ads, um, we, we got a brochure from um, an organization in the Sunshine Coast and the front page, every letter was a different color. Well, I won't say that. Every consecutive letter was a different color. So the color might be repeated, but was, I could not read it. Uh, and my eyes would go cross-eyed before I could finish reading it. And I can read upside down and backward text with no problem. I couldn't read that. Um, font vendors tend to thoroughly annoy people. Um, and certain fonts are annoying. Um, Comic Sans, for instance, Curlsy and Papayas are, people consider them cutesy fonts. They're, they're really annoying. Um, so, uh, it, 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 you may think it, it, it's going to do something for your ad. If annoying people is what you want to accomplish, that would be a good choice. Proof your ads. We get so many ads with spelling mistakes, missing number in their phone number, um, the wrong address. Oh, I changed my address. I forgot to update my ad. They didn't proof it before they sent it out. Um, Incorrect information is, is, you know, the wrong phone numbers. Um, we got, we had, we, we had an ad that we were running in the magazine. Uh, Susan was sharing it on social media. It was for um, an executive position or at, at, a, at an art gallery. Susan was sharing it all over the place on, on Facebook. It had the wrong phone number. Finally, the person phoned Susan and said, please stop sharing this. It's got the wrong phone number. The person who was getting the calls had nothing to do with the art gallery. And that only happened last week. Um, missing information, you know, make sure your phone number is there. Make sure your contact information there. No point saying who you are if they don't know how to get a hold of you. It sort of misses the whole point. And make sure it works in color and black and white. We've seen people create color ads, run it in the newspaper, the newspaper prints a black and white, and it's just a black blob. So those are the key points of, your, of, of, of advertising to keep in mind. Um, there's more than that, and we actually have a separate advertising um, uh, workshop that we've done, um, which is about two hours, but, um, we didn't schedule it this time around. We may resurrect that shortly. Um, if anybody's interested, I think we have the slideshow for the advertising workshop up online. I'll make that available because it, it interlocks with this and you guys should have that material. So I'll, I'll send it to you after. Um, <coughs> Do you have a list of the three ways of marketing? Yes, we'll be getting to that shortly. Uh, because what we're going to be talking about is budget next. Yeah. Excuse okay. me just for a second. I just wanted to say, talking about phone numbers, here's an invoice I have and there's no phone number on it. It's all to pay it. There's <laughs> island gunners in it. Yeah, so Susan would just overheard me and uh, she had an invoice from uh, someone that we did business with and the invoice wants us to pay by credit card over the phone, but there's no phone number on the invoice. <laughs> so 
Um, she'll have to go look it up, but that's even, even the invoices need to have all your contact information. Anyway, how to market on a budget. Well, there are lots of free and inexpensive ways. Um, host an event or a class. Um, so if you host an event or a class, you can, that, and, and get people out, you know, you might, um, you know, if you've got, if you've got something that, or that would appeal to kids, um, that is a phenomenal way to get kids come in, do it free, do it for an hour or two hours uh, in a venue, a little tough to do right now. Um, but getting the kids in brings the parents in. You know, so those, that, that's an inexpensive way to do something. If you're um, farmers markets are very inexpensive ways to to get your word word out there too, um, and most of the farmers markets around have have got COVID protocols in place, and we have a friend who lives two blocks away. She does farmers market every Saturday. The farmers market runs eleven months of the year here in here in the area. Uh, you know, the nice thing about the island as opposed to Regina is that we can do these things 11 months. Um, so she said everyone, um, she supports her family, she and her husband and two boys, um, just by doing farmer's markets. And she sells prints hand over fist. Business card draws, you know, so if you're at an event or uh, if you've got uh, artwork hanging someplace, um, Susan's got artwork hanging at a, an investment broker here in, in Parksville. Um, you could do a business card draw where you throw your business card in there and there's a giveaway. It might be an apron. It might be um, a, a free class. Um, those types of, any type of giveaway that's inexpensive uh, where you can accumulate a mailing list or a contact list um, is very, very powerful. Email marketing is, can be free. Uh, MailChimp um, <coughs> is the one that we use. Um, with MailChimp, you can have up to 2,000 people in your mailing list and you can send 10,000 emails a month. So if you had 2,000 people in your, in that, you could send five emails a month. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Mark, marketing is sort of a round robin affair and social media is people who follow you. Your website is when people are looking for you or have found you through another mechanism and go to get more information about you. Email marketing is where you're going to them. Um, you're in, you end up in their mailbox and, um, it's a great way to, to promote the other components. So uh, email marketing is, can be free unless you've got a big mail list. And then it's, it's only 30 cents a person over that or something like that. Car magnets. Um, it doesn't, they don't cost much to produce. Uh, you go to your local sign maker, they produce the, uh, something on a magnetic material. You can slap it on your car door for, when you're driving around town. Great marketing, uh, slap, put it on. QR codes are good to have on those. Uh, they're those little fancy little rectangles that have a lot of dots on them, but people can shoot them with their camera on their phone and it goes directly to the website or brings up your contact information or whatever else you have there. Um, Lots of places on uh, digital marketing where you can get discount codes or free coupons for Facebook or, or Google AdWords. Um, so take advantage of promotional coupons where you can get them. A lot of web hosting companies offer uh, credits for Google ads or Facebook ads. Publish great content. If you have a website um, 
there's a or social media page or whether you're doing an email blast there's a bunch of um, content ideas to uh, that attracts people attention um, top 10 lists are are great for that or top five or top six or top 14 or top 30 <coughs> top X lists are great um, to attract people's attention. Um, tip collections, how to thing, do things, great ways to have content for your website or for your blog or Facebook that will catch people's interest and get them reading. Um, I read all of that sort of stuff um, if it's in an area that I'm interested in. Uh, Susan and I love gardening and working in the yard. Uh, we both like to cook. So, um, you know, top 10 uh, utensils for the kitchen, for instance. And it doesn't have to be about art. Um, it can be about anything. Um, when I was selling real estate, I was in Kitsilano, um, selling real estate in Kits. Um, because of my background in technology, I got caught up in the dot-com collapse of 2001, switched to real estate and switched back and then retired. Um, <coughs> but, but when the real estate market collapsed in 2008, I switched back to technology. But on my website, because I was a techie, I had pages about everything because I knew that something could bring people in. So I had a article that I had written about and I'd, I'd found a reference and I, I, I rewrote it so it was my content using their concepts about moving pets internationally. And um, this one day um, I got a phone call from a woman from Victoria. She says, I'm moving to England in the spring. This was in the fall. And I got to move my dog to England. And I've been trying to find a company that would help me do that. And I've been searching the internet and every time I search the internet, you come up number one for moving pets internationally. She says, do you know a company that, um, that can do that? I said, no, I don't. She says, well, thank you for your time when she hung up. Well, I'm the type of person that if you ask a question that I don't have an answer, I got to find the answer. So I did a search it took me two minutes. I found a, a company in Richmond <laughs> that specialized in moving pets internationally. Well, her name and phone number had come up on call display, so I phoned her back. And I said, Mrs. Smith, this is Jeff Shields from Remax. I said, we were just talking about moving pets internationally. You asked me a question I didn't know the answer to, so I had to get the answer. Here's a company in Richmond. Here's their phone number. Here's their email. Um, give them a call. I think they can help you out. She said, well, that's very kind. You didn't have to do that. I said, nah, yes, I did. Six months later, I get a phone call from her. She goes, Jeff, this is Mrs. Smith from Victoria. You helped me find a company to move my dog. She says, I'm now ready to move to England. I need to put my house on the market in Victoria. Do you know a realtor in Victoria who might be able to help me out? Well, of course I do. Remax has a phenomenal referral network. So I got on to Remax, opened up my referral thing sent the referral to my buddy in Victoria. He called her within the hour, listed his house that afternoon, sold it in three days above asking. House closed four weeks later. I got a check in the mail as my referral fee for $3,500. So anything that you put up that promotes you, promotes your name, gets your name out there 27 times, can result eventually in a contact, a friend, and a sale. So don't be afraid to do top 10 lists, tip collection lists, how-to articles, instructional videos. If you're, uh, Valerie, you're doing something rather unique. Uh, um, a video on that would be a great marketing opportunity. Um, write and submit copy for, to websites and blogs. Uh, newspapers, magazines. Write an article for Island Arts Magazine. And um, Kathy, you can do that even from Regina because our, our reading goes all over the world, right? So um, anything, you know, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you don't mind shipping your product international, watch out for scams. Um, <clears throat> we get a lot of that too. Um, 
So just do your due diligence when you're getting requests from, from people you don't know and uh, only accept payment by credit card and for the amount of the invoice, never accept payment. Greater than that, that's a scam right off the bat. Certified checks are not safe anymore. Um, E-transfers are good. Um, PayPal is good. Um, and credit cards are good. So uh, be, just be conscious of, of scams. Um, they're out there all the time. Uh, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. But write copy, uh, submit it into your local newspapers. Uh, they don't have to be press release, they can be anything. Um, if they publish it, great. If they don't publish it, submit it again somewhere else. Another free way to get to do your marketing is social media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Pinterest, all of those are, are good choices. There's something like 350 social media sites out there. Uh, Reddit is another one. Um, those are all great places where you can post regularly. Um, again, it doesn't have to be Jermaine. If you have a Facebook page, create a business page um, and the two of them go hand in hand. We have two business pages, one for Island Arts Magazine, one for Susan Schaefer Fine Art. Um, both Susan and I can administer both of those fan pages and then we have our personal pages. And there's a whole technique around um, utilize, utilizing those to, uh, to effect. So website, social media, email campaigns, and print media is a revolving um, one feeding the other. Post regularly. Now, regularly will be different for different people. Um, <clears throat> Susan tries to post something uh, once or twice a day. Um, some people like to post once a month. Um, once a month is regular. Uh, once you know, so whatever your inclination is, that's what you want to go with. Don't force it. Do what you feel comfortable with. Just be consistent. Business cards. Create awesome business cards. Um, every handshake is an opportunity to hand out a business card. Um, Right now with COVID, not so much. Susan went to hand someone, a, she was at the old schoolhouse uh, last two weeks ago and set up behind her plexiglass shield in the gift shop, offered someone a business card and they went, ah, oh, no, <laughs> didn't want to touch it. Um, it's also the reason why we've gone totally digital with the magazine because people won't pick them up. Um, but as COVID, um, goes down uh, and we're back into social contact. Business cards are, um, are great. Um, Susan also produces uh, bookmarks for herself and she'll give people a business card and then do um, you need a bookmark? And they go, oh yeah, I got four or five books going at a time. She'll give them four or five bookmarks. And again, they're, they're just in large versions of her, uh, of her business card. So, um, and those, that's a giveaway. That's a promotional giveaway. Um, so, um, Jeff, it's Kathy. Is there an electronic way of doing the business card draw that you're aware of? Like, you know? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, and actually, that's a really good idea. Um, on your website, you can... <coughs> You get people, so this is where, um, and on, on your social media, um, if you're gonna use something like MailChimp or Constant Contact, um, you want people to be able to sign up for your emails. So what you do is you sign up for my email and enter into my monthly draw for whatever it is, Okay. right? So that way you're accumulating email addresses for your, for your email campaigns. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and that's exactly what that's for. And so that's the electronic version of the business card in a jar. Okay. 
Okay. Jeff, another method that I tried not recently, but when you're setting up your business cards with Vistaprint, they give you an electronic version to share. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I haven't used it recently, so I'll take a peek at it, but it's quite a unique and then you just share it via whatever method you want to. And if you have a, if you have a JPEG or a PNG version of it, add that to the signature on all your emails. Good idea. And your signature, when you have contact with somebody, should have all your contact information. If you notice in the emails I sent you, my signature had my name, my address, my phone number, my website. Right? I don't use any graphics because um, a lot of people block incoming graphics by default. So you want a text version as well as a, an image version. And always carry business cards with you. Um, that'll become more important as COVID goes away. Another form of marketing we call guerrilla marketing. Oh, does anyone need a break? Uh, uh, Gordon, I think just went off for a break. Um, anyone need a break? We can take five minutes if you need to. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, five sounds good. Yeah. Okay, we'll re reconvene in five minutes at seven after 11. Okay. So Gordon, how are you doing? You can unmute your mic, I think. How's that now? That's good. So okay. how are you making out? Mm -hmm. How are you making out with everything? Well, not bad. Um, I'm still trying to find my way. You know, we've been on the island for, we're in BC, that matter, for about uh, just over two years. Um, uh, for what I do in Ontario, uh, you know, they wouldn't even look at me. And I mean, I was marketing my brains out. Once I come out here, all of a sudden, it's completely different. Um, so uh, uh, it's just finding my way. And I'm retired recently. So, you know, I have to do things on a budget and just try to find galleries and places and things. You know, I just finished something at the Macmillan. And of course, the... Uh, we, we were at the opening. We met at the opening. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, it's just a matter of trying to figure out where's what and, you know, if you wanted to get something put up in a restaurant or a, a business, how to approach these people without, you know, getting the bums rush, you know. Uh, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get 99 out of every 100 bum rushes. Yeah. Now, when you, uh, most of my marketing, what I did was I went and found all the galleries in, let's say, Vancouver Island that would have my kind of stuff. And I would just sort of email them and say, you know, here's my website. You know, I'm looking for a place to hang a painting or two. Um, and I don't know whether that would be perceived as like annoying junk mail or if that's just the, what you have to do to get things done. Okay, oh, so here's Susan's method. She phones them first. Make personal contact by phone. And then if they're interested, follow up with the email. Otherwise, that's what will happen, is they'll just tag you a spammer. Oh, okay, I never knew that. Um, how do you approach that? I just say, I'm an artist, uh, you know, they can't phone, see your stuff. Phone ask, phone ask either for the curator or the manager or the owner of the gallery, depending on whether it's a commercial or a nonprofit, and speak to them about um, if they're taking new artists and uh, ask them what their practice is for um, getting the work. They might want you to send them a selection of paintings by email or something like that, as opposed to getting them to visit the website, be a little proactive and send them images, but talk to them first so they know to expect it. Okay. And you'll find that your, your bum rush 
on the phone isn't quite as tough and you you won't get tagged as a spammer because if they say spam doesn't matter how many e emails you send after that they're never going to even see them ah uh, okay yeah i know i've got an ad going out in the uh the island magazine there uh this next issue yeah so i'm hoping that'll get something going uh and I think a lot of the galleries are doing content too, aren't you? Pardon me? You're doing some editorial content as well, I think. Susan, I? that you're going to run an ad and she was going to run a press release or something for you. Oh, okay. Um, I might have misunderstood that. <laughs> I know it was a bio ad and I thought it was just like an ad with a little bit oh, of a... Right. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm, I don't know. Um, if I'm missing something, let me know. <laughs> Well, like I said, send press releases about anything you're doing. So if you get a show in a gallery or you got a gallery who's going to show your work, that's a press release opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that sounds good. We're learning as we go, I guess. Yeah, well, that, that's how it is. I mean, trial and error, that's the whole way. And we're happy to share our trials and our errors. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've made one or two of those. <laughs> yeah, well, we've made about 10,000. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always, uh, it's always that. Okay. So we have everybody back. Um, so Gord, where are you from? Uh, originally or right now? Right now. Qualicum Beach. Oh, okay. And how about originally? Uh, Hamilton, Ontario. Ah, well, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> If you're trying to market landscape painting in Ontario, can you have a better chance of being prime minister? I mean, you know, it's a pretty rough go there, but uh, it's so nice to be out here. As soon as I came out here, everything changed. Oh, that's good. Very good. What kind of landscapes then? Um, well, I was told to do things that were more local. So what I do is I just approach things rather than looking for you know, there's the beautiful scene right there. Um, and I was trained as a commercial artist. Uh, so I just look for the way you think light would hit an object, like um, an old stump or something. And I can find beauty in that. And then through my painting style, I can, you know, sort of take it to sort of a little bit more of an abstract -y looking impressionistic thing or, or whatever. So what I'm going to suggest is, um... I will, if you guys approve, I will make sure that you have each other's emails and that we take that conversation offline. Got it. Okay. Because yeah. I want to move on. Uh, we've got about a, a, an hour left, so we still have a fair bit of material to cover. <laughs> so what I want to get into next is guerrilla marketing. Um, this is creativity over budget. Um, strategies that are cheap and easy to implement. Um, these include uh, balloon giveaways at local events, joining in on local contests. Um, if you win a contest, you get publicity out of it. Um, develop a customer referral program uh, and reward the referrer. So if, if someone walks into um, our house, we have a in our dining room, that's our personal collection. The rest of the house is all Susan's artwork. But the dining room is our personal collection. And when we have guests and that sort of thing and they're interested in a particular artist, you know, we say, well, that's David Langevin or Mike Swab or uh, Janice Bridgman or, or whoever it may be. And, oh, and the, we have a port, uh, an oil painting portrait of our previous dog, which was Karen Martin Sampson and she does portraits. Uh, whether they're pet or human. And, oh, I need a portrait of my dog. And they want a referral. So we will refer them to, to Karen. But there's nothing wrong with um, having a referral program where you, um, if you end up selling a $10,000 painting, for instance, sending a $50 gift card to the person who sent that over to you would be a nice thing to do. So, um, and they can be, you know, if, if um, you know, keep it in proportion to what the referral turns out to be worth and only after there's a sale. You know, so um, Susan has a bunch of art calendars 
and aprons that she can hand out as, as, uh, as rewards. Um, enter online contests. There's a lot of contests uh, through Island um, or International Artist Magazine, um, Southwest Magazine, or um, Southwest Artist Magazine in the States. Um, huge publications have contests every month. We know of local artists who've entered and if not winning, getting honorable mention or in the top three or whatever. Great publicity, they got your name. And so we'll do online contests. It, they, they can be very beneficial. We used to run them f um, when we were hosting the Island Arts Expo, but um, we don't do that anymore. Um, so guerrilla marketing, there's cheap and easy ways to get your name out there. One of the 27 ways you want to get your name in front of people. I mentioned it briefly earlier, email signatures. Always have an email signature on the first contact with somebody um, or anything that's going to be uh, where you want people to get back to you and by different means. Um, include your website, your phone number, an image possibly of your artwork, um, link to your social media pages, uh, tagline uh, or slogan. Um, when I did the slide for this a few years ago, there were 50 billion emails being sent today. That number has quadrupled. There's now 200 billion, or 2,000 billion. So that's 2 trillion emails are sent every day. So you need to make your email signature stand out and have an impact. Um, having a nice image is there, but like I mentioned, a lot of uh, people block the images because they take too long to download, particularly on phones. Um, if, if people are on cellular, they don't want to download those images. So you got to make sure that your information is in text as well, and then maybe repeat it in, a, in an image. So email signatures, very effective of getting your name out there and your contact information. Family and friends. I don't want to bother my sister to promote my artwork. Wrong answer. If your friends and family won't support you, who the hell will? So get your friends and your family, people who care about you, to promote you. They would they'd love to do it. All you have to do is ask. They're not going to do it if you don't ask. Because they might think that, oh, I'll be presumptuous report promoting him. Say, so, look, help me get the word out. That so, would be Saskatchewan people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Susan, Susan was like that originally, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, my sister is one of her biggest promoters. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, and, you know, and my sister buys, you know, buys her yearly calendar. She'll buy five or six of them uh, with Susan's artwork in them and hand them out to her friends mm -hmm. and to her kids. You know? um, so this is the note I have on my slide is often ignored because you don't want to bother them. My reaction to that is get over it. Um, if they can't, won't support you, who else will? Uh, that's what I put in writing when I'm saying it's who the hell, hell else will. Um, so a great way to get your name out there, and often more than 27 times. Family and friends, use them, abuse them to get your name out there. Online promotion. Website, email, blogs, social media, they're all different mechanisms. So, Websites are pretty much static content. We have a cat. <laughs> Come here, Pepper. Well, well. It's a cat and not a dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, website is pretty much static content. Um, it doesn't get updated all the time, although in my web, on our website course next week, um, 
I talk about having to keep your content fresh. Um, on your website, you want to link to your MailChimp forms or your email platform forms. Um, you want follow me on Facebook or other social media pages. And if you're up to it, a blog. Um, blogs be consistent, whether that's once a week, twice a week, every three days, um, once a month, um, twice a month, um, as often as you can and as you're inclined. Once every six months, not quite enough. Um, email campaigns, incredibly powerful. Um, so if you put something in your, if you've completed a piece and you put it up on your website, when you do your MailChimp campaign, Susan does her hot off the pallet on the first of every month and any <coughs> new pieces that she's created, uh, she'll say what's new and then she goes what's sold and then upcoming events, um, all of that so that um, uh, you, you can do the, uh, the MailChimp campaigns and it's going sent out to people where people have to visit your website this is a way to do both, to get them to your website. Um, which brings us into a technical discussion on the Canty anti-spam law. Um, make sure you comply. Uh, a lot of my clients don't want to deal with that. So um, I will do their email campaigns for them and administer that. We'll set, set up a form on their website. Um, I do the email campaigns on their behalf. I do that for about 20 clients. Um, I charge a flat rate for each email campaign that gets sent out. Um, but if you don't ap apply, if you take, if you just copy a whole bunch of emails into your, um, into your email program and send it to 50 people um, where you don't have their permission um, and it's a commercial uh, type email where you're soliciting a gallery. That's a violation of the Canada, Canada anti-spam law. For an individual, the fines can be a million dollars. For a business, they can be $10 million and up to five years in jail. Um, so you want to make sure that you abide by that. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, if you have an event, make sure you have a paper sign-up form at events, make sure that they're dated and the name of the event that they're at and collect me email addresses and have a disclaimer on there that providing your email allows me, provides explicit permission for me to contact you via email. And that's the way you avoid any penalties under the Canada Anti-Spam Law. Other online um, mechanisms, blogs. So this is an opportunity to create new and fresh content for your website and it's searchable by the search engines. Um, again, my example of the woman who was looking for how to move her pets. Um, doesn't matter what you write about in your blog, do a recipe, uh, do how to, how to articles. Uh, if you've done a recent trip that was inspiring, whether it inspired your art or not, if it inspired you, um, great. We did a trip to Tuscany last year. Um, we took a week long cooking class in Tuscany. We've been publishing the recipes we got with permission from the, from the organizers of the cooking school. Um, Susan's done paintings as a result of that. Um, we talk about just the trip in general and our experience in Florence and going to uh, the Futsi Gallery and, and um, seeing some of the churches and how phenomenal they were. So the blogs can be about anything and you never know what, how people are going to get to your website. And all of a sudden they see a picture of your artwork and go, gee, I really like that. And they may, it may result in a sale. So it's, it's a great way to have fresh new content. Um, you can make guest posts or comment on, on other people's blogs. Um, if somebody has, writes a blog about something that is interesting, uh, feel free to write about it uh, or comment on it or, or even write your own little blog. Read an interesting blog today by Susan Schaefer 
about her trip, trip to Tuscany. I'm so jealous, I wish I could be there right now, but COVID is stopping that. And provide a link to the other blog. So it's a way, you know, it can be that simple or not. Um, do you need post. permission? Sorry, Jeff. Do, do you need permission to use someone else's blog? Not if you, you can, you can, under copyright law, there's what's called fair use. You do not per need permission to link to anybody. The nature of the web is that links are there. People know if they find content that they like, people can link to it. What is not appropriate is copying their content and using it on yours. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> you can use uh, what's called um, uh, fair use. So you might take the opening paragraph or a paragraph that is of interest to you. Um, the guy by the name of Chris Collier, who does has a, a that I follow all the time. His website is C C S Tricks, and it's a technical website for us techies. That, um, and what he'll do is he'll take a paragraph, and he'll quote it, and then he'll he'll say, "I was reading uh, Jeff Shields' blog on blah 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 blah. Um, this is what Jeff had to say," and he'll quote a paragraph, maybe even two. And then he'll have to read more about what Jeff has to say, visit his blog at and link to it. So it's promoting the other person. Uh, often that other person will find something on Chris's on CSS tricks that they like and they will do the same back. So that's a great way to get an interchange. It, it also helps with things like search engine optimization, which I talk about in two weeks. Um, <laughs> getting those links from other websites to your website is uh, is is very important in terms of uh, getting your search you're getting your website to rank higher um, also sharing those blogs so you write a blog on your website you share that on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter um, then you put out a newsletter uh, through MailChimp to say uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, read my recent blog on eh, 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 and link to that. So now you've got a round robin. You've got Facebook pointing at the website. You got the face, uh, the website pointing at Facebook. You got both the website and the uh, website getting a sign up form uh, for people to sign up for your newsletter. And the newsletter is telling people to go visit, to follow you and to visit your blog. So that becomes a round robin and that becomes a very effective circle. Um, thing to remember on Facebook is only your followers can see what you put up. If you, unless you make it public, which now makes it searchable. Uh, if you want it, if you want people to be able to just follow your, your business side of things, create a fan or business page, um, which is public by definition. So your personal uh, uh, page is only your followers and depending on what your privacy settings are, maybe friends of friends, or you can make a particular post public. So um, again, that, that three way mechanism is, is very effective. So uh, Jeff, like, um, I did a couple of things during COVID that were inspirational, put it that way, like where I got my inspiration from and um, yeah. what I was working on during COVID. Would that be a good opener for a blog? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it could be anything. So I was just about to say this, that um, putting it all together, when you write a blog, you want to do one to 10 articles a month. Make it informative or inspirational and not an advertisement. Okay, so blogs should not be advertisements. So inspirational or informative, how-tos are great, top 10 lists are great, right? Um, so write a blog, one to 10, right? Whatever you're comfortable with, great thing to do for your website. Share the blog on social media. 
and then periodically send an email campaign once a month or so summarizing all your blogs for that month and linking to each article. So my, um, my accountant, I do my accountant's website. So every month or two, he has a blog called Business Matters. And um, so when we do that, we immediately share it to his Facebook business page, which I administer for him. <clears throat> and then he immediately sends out a MailChimp campaign to all his clients, summarizing the four components for Business Matters, because each one has a has four components, usually technology, taxes, um, legal stuff, and, and um, management. So um, he'll summarize one paragraph from each of that with a link to the blog on each section. So, <clears throat> so we do that as we do that as often as he has time to do that during tax season, not very often during the summer, about once a month. But, um, so you write the blog or create a web page or create a piece of art. Um, if you create a piece of art, take photos along the way. I know you can never take too many photos and then you can do it. Then you've got those photos as reference maybe do a blog article on how you created that particular piece. And when you, um, you can share the steps on Facebook and then at the end you do the blog and you share the blog and sort of summarize everything that you maybe posted up. So Susan does, uh, she doesn't have anything specific to say on her artist page, Susan Susan's Schaefer Fine Arts page. She'll, she'll do, this is what I'm working on. And it may be, the, the beginning steps, the first day of a painting. And then a, a, a few days later, she may, this is how I'm progressing on that piece. And then when it's finished, she goes, she'll do all three of them together and say, step one, step two, step three. She, she, she goes, <laughs> I think every artist goes through this where they get started and going, God, what have I done? What, what am I doing? I can't do something like this. Oh, this isn't looking too bad. Oh, okay, I'll keep going. Oh, this is a piece of shit. What the, f what was I thinking? And then it's, oh, best painting ever. So those are the four stages that an artist goes through <laughs> when they're creating a piece of work. Um, I don't know how many of you go through that, but I know Susan does. I uh, usually get the call at the, oh, this is shit phase, but uh, <laughs> what do you think of this? Uh, okay, uh, it needs some work. Um, Anyway, uh, you can do that. So just take photos as you go. Social media, you want to post as often as you want. Um, I've had to get Susan to back off because she was spending too much time on social media, not enough time painting. So I told her, I said, look, spend an hour a day on social media and limit yourself to that hour. Whether it's 15 minutes, four times a day, twice a day for half an hour, or an hour every morning, doesn't matter. But don't spend four hours on social media. Um, keep it relevant. Um, don't do trivia posts, um, particularly on your business page. Um, don't say, I'm going for coffee with Jeff. Um, nobody cares they'll stop following you. Do something that's relevant. Um, share other people's posts that, that are relevant. Promote your feather, fellow artists. It's not a competition. Um, have a, have, if you don't have a business page on Facebook, create one. If you're not using Facebook or Twitter or any of the other social media. <clears throat> um, it can be one of, Susan sells about 80% of her artwork through Facebook right now. So email campaigns, um, remind people about events as needed. This is separate from your, your blog summary. So, you can send out more than one email. 
just don't gang them up at like one after the other, you know, space them a day or two apart. Um, so if you have an event, you want to send out an email blast to all your people one month before so that they can put it on their calendar. And then you send a reminder um, a week before. And then you might say, see you tomorrow the day before. So MailChimp allows you to have 2,000 subscribers and up to 10,000 emails a month. So if you've only got 500 subscribers, you can send 20 emails to them. If you've got 2,000 subscribers, you can only send five emails a month. <coughs> After that, you've got to pay. Jeff, question. Yeah, answer. Do you do any coaching on the MailChimp um, process? Yeah, we've we've run courses, but I will. Uh, they're they're a day long. Uh, really need to be um, on a computer on Mailchimp. Um, the thing with Mailchimp is that changes they change their interface um, about every three months, so um, it's it's hard to have something that's can. But they do produce an enormous number of excellent online videos themselves. And that is my resource to learn new stuff. So I use them, just search for online, or just search for MailChimp video tutorials. Oh, okay. And you'll find lots of them. Okay. And they'll be on the MailChimp website. They're updated fairly often. Um, and that that's really the best mechanism because i find it takes me so long to create the email we've almost missed the event like okay. it takes me so what a lot of my clients do and i charge 32 dollars and 50 cents per email campaign they email me the material um usually a couple of days before they want it to go out one because uh, to fit so that i can schedule it into my queue and then I take care of sending it out. What I do is I create it. I send you a proof. Um, you make any corrections. And then I send it out on your behalf. Okay. Now, the nice thing, too, is if you've got an event, emails can be scheduled up to a month in advance. Okay. So you can, um, <clears throat> you can talk about the event on such and such a date. We create an email. Uh, the announcement for the event a month before, and then we can take that same email, replicate it, and call it a reminder, and schedule it for one week before. And then you don't even have to think about it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so take it. Take advantage of online tutorials. Um, Everything from how to do a press release to MailChimp to F Facebook. There's train video uh, online training videos for that. This will become a reference. This whole video I'm recording. I will email a link to you after, so you can go back and watch it again if you want. Um, most of what we're covering is in the PDF that I sent. Um, does that answer your question? Your mic's off, so. I know, I keep, I keep being interrupted, so I keep it off, but then I forget it's off. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> We're uh, artists, not technology. Uh, <laughs> uh, blogs. One of the things about blogs is it's, it's a phenomenal way to get new and fresh content. And that is the name of the game when it comes to uh, search engine optimization, is fresh, unique, quality content. Um, as, as many as you want. One to 10 is good. If you want to do 30 a month, one every day, that's okay too. Okay. Um, make sure that every blog you do links to something else on your website. So if it's a new painting or, or something, or just back to the homepage or something else, or your contact page, whatever, link it back to your website. Make sure that there's a reference to your sign-up form for MailChimp in your blog. And a follow me on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Something that'll uh, take you, they will take you to your social media page. 
and then a share button so that other people can share your blog onto social media. So you sharing your blog on social media gets your followers. If I like your blog and I share it, it gets all my followers. So all of a sudden it can become very um, exponential. So Susan, I, if I, Susan's got about a thousand plus followers on Facebook. I've got about 200. Um, so when I share something of Susan's, there are people that aren't in the arts. Um, and they're a whole different crowd of people, but uh, a lot of them tend to be realtors and um, they're, if they share it, then all their home buyers and home sellers are picking up her artwork. Uh, so it's a great way to spread that. So um, the share button on your, on your blog is a good thing. And I, I talk about that next week in the, when we talk about websites. One thing to remember about social media is it's content disappears really fast on news feeds. Um, so uh, often somebody will post something. I'll see it on my news feed. We may be friends with the same person. Susan and I might be friends with the same person. She never sees that post. Or she'll see posts that I don't from the same person. So. Posts disappear quickly, um, but links are always valuable because if the if it's, if it's search engines can pick those up. So you, in your social media, you want to link back to your blog posts. You want to link to your website in, in any social media that you do. And in your email sign-up forms and that, um, you want the, your email sign-up form right on Facebook. You actually have a mechanism for um, for that. So today we covered quite a bit. Now I want to throw the floor open to questions and that sort of thing for the next half hour or next 20 minutes anyway, <clears throat> assuming you have any. But that's, that's, and I went through that really fast. So, um, Does anyone have anything to ask? And you can unmute your mic so we can make this a, a, a four-way conversation if you want. You mentioned car magnets. Yeah. When you say car magnets, in my mind, I see like um, probably 12 by 12 uh, and sticks on the door of the driver's or the passenger side. So what, what kind of content should be on that? your name or name of business. If like, I mean, for us, we have Island Arts Magazine, we have Young at Art, we have Susan Schaefer Fine Art, we have Young at Art Web Services. So we can have different magnets with those. So the name that you wanna be known by, and I would put a QR code. Okay. Um, there, can Vistaprint do that? Pardon me? Can Vistaprint use the codes? Uh, no, you can go to an online, uh, a QR, QR code generator, just search for those, okay? And then once you get the code, you can put it into Vistaprint to include on whatever you want. Okay. But those are those little squares with a whole bunch of little dots on them. Yep. And if you shoot them with your camera, they'll, so you can create different ones. It can be just a URL to your web page. It could be, it can have all your contact information. They can, they can be V cards. Um, so there's no amount, there's no information that it can, it can be a product thing. Um, so QR codes. Um, well, that makes sense because who's going to be driving by you or stop in a parking lot to break down? <laughs> yeah. The QR code. And they can have your phone number. And so lots of different ways to do that. Um, and your website and a phone number. They can be that simple. But I would always try and do it. If you have a website or if you don't have a website, a, a phone number in a QR code. Um, you can do a V card QR code. You can do a URL um, or a product uh, QR, QR code. Rented lips, I gotta send these ones back. <laughs> um, 
okay, what happens when you trip okay. over your tongue, right? Yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, and I would, um, depending on your car and where the, how the, how the doors flow, if they're just sort of a little bit um, convex, um, you can go one by a foot, 12 by 24 inches. Oh, okay. Right. Um, if they're on the back panel of the car, um, like if you have a hatchback or a SUV, um, you might have to go longer. Okay. Right. To fit above the license plate. Um, okay. You can also get your back windshield actually painted with, um, with the see-through stuff. They, they do it on a, on a, a stick on and then they stick it on the inside or outside of the car. But you can still see out, but it's readable from the, from the, from one side, but it's, it's like a, a, a one-way mirror. Um, so yeah, those, those things. So your, your car, if you want, having it removable is often handy. Um, if you're off to, if you're going off on a road trip, say to an art show and you've got artwork in the car, um, you don't necessarily want to be advertising that while you're on the highway or when you stop for the night, mm -hmm. um, because you may not have any artwork left in the morning. Um, so you can peel those off and then when you're at the art show, you can put it on there because all your artwork's inside, um, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so be judicious about that. Be aware. We have a lot of um, thieves around in this. We do. Yeah. So be, be aware. And that's the nice thing about the magnetic is that they are removable. Thank you. Any other questions? Kathy, Gord? Uh, yeah, um, you mentioned entering online contests for art. Yeah. So you can promote them, like if you win. Um, I find when I am looking at doing contests, the majority of the ones I come across, you have to pay a fee. Yep. Enter. So, do you have a list of ones that are free at all? No, just sim simply do an online search for online art contests, free. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, no, there's, but a lot of them, the, it's not a big charge. And um, usually the artwork is published, particularly if it's going to be online voting. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a cheap form of advertising. Okay. Right. Um, you know, again, look at return on investment. If it's, if it's under 50 bucks, um, but it's got a huge following, um, it would be worth it. Mm -hmm. Right, because you can't Especially buy online voting. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you can you can even do your own. I was just thinking that we'll create our own contest. <laughs> okay. First, second, <laughs> third prize. Oh, Susan, we have four prizes. <laughs> well, what you can do is you can put three of your own paintings up. Mm -hmm. Get people to vote on them. Okay. And do it as a giveaway. Okay. So it's a, it, you know, so doing an online contest, not only just entering, but hosting. Mm -hmm. So it could be your own work. Which of my three paintings do you like the best? Right. Okay. You entered in for a draw for a eight by eight print for mm -hmm. that original, right? Yeah. So, and you know, a print might cost you what, 50 bucks, 60 bucks? Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you can do that, or, or, or if you do a paper print, um, even less. Mm -hmm. So with Gord, um, you do watercolors, don't you? I used to. But you're doing colors. Yeah. Oh, Kathy, you're, do you're doing watercolor art cards, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a set of your cards is a great giveaway. Yeah, yeah. You know, a set of six is a phenomenal gift. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and that, if, are you having those produced commercially or are you printing, doing your, making your own cards? Uh, commercially. Yeah. So, you know, if you're doing lots of them, they're under a buck a piece, I would think. Or another thing for you, Kathy, would be the people who purchased your uh, paintings at the corporate level could purchase thank you cards for their clients from you. Yeah, yeah. 
That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 And you sell them the cards. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Um, Actually, so, they're pretty pricey in Saskatchewan. They're two dollars each. Oh, I paid five dollars per card for uh, thank you cards. You pay? Is that? What I, you I paid. I bought from an artist here. Thank you cards. Yeah. I wanted to give to people who gave me a donation, and yeah. I paid five dollars a card. So yeah. it's all. Yeah. Well, um, okay. So Kathy, you're in Regina. Go yeah. see Dale Schaefer at Western Lithow Painters. Tell them that you're that um, Susan Schaefer sent you. Okay. And uh, if you print in bulk, um, he does all our he did all our printing and he still does the calendar oh, okay. Susan, right? If you look at the Island Arts Magazine, the printed copies, if yeah. you have to find one, printed by Western Litho and Regina. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Gail's the owner there and uh, um, Thank you. he'll look after you and he'll give you good pricing. Yeah, that'd be better because it's expensive, like I'm not making much on these cards, so. If you, if you do runs, you know, larger runs still, and you can gang them up where you can do a lot of cards on one sheet, mm -hmm. and then they're cut and folded. Yeah. As opposed to single cards at a time. Yeah, so he yeah. Can get large, large card stock and, and, uh, and print, you know, depending on the sheet, anywhere from two to 10 cards on one sheet. Yeah. Okay. No. So That'd be you, great. I can get him to print some prints for me too. Because you're paying by the sheet, not by the card that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's easy for them to cut them nice and clean and fold them for you and, and even supply envelopes inexpensively. I'm surprised actually at how quickly my card thing has grown since I started. Yeah. Which is good. So yeah. yeah, I'm happy with it. So yes, definitely I'll get a hold of him. <laughs> now the other thing, if you got lots of cards and you got a lot of samples, mm -hmm. you'll find that if you go into a gift shop and you have supply the rack, yeah, they'll take them. Okay. And often just on consignment, just make yeah. sure you have good inventory. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we bought we. We were getting ready for the Island Arts Expo one year, and Susan had a lot of cards she had created in Western Litho and printed them all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they were all done with, with offset printing, not uh, web press or laser or whatever. So they were high quality cards. And um, she said, I need to get a rack for the art show. <laughs> so I started looking online and I said, well, I can get you one. You're about $350 new. Um, and I asked to get shipped up from the States and it would take six weeks and the art show was only four weeks away. Mm -hmm. So we started looking for used, but the used art card, art rack, the card racks were going really, really fast. We'd find one and we'd phone them. Oh, sorry, it's already gone. So she said, I really need to find a card rack. So she said, let's go for a walk. So we were, li we were living, living semi-rural up in Qualicum Bay, which is about half an hour north of, of, um, of Parksville. And we walked out the back gate through the, through the uh, woods down to the road that ran in behind us. We walked 100 yards up the street and sitting on the edge of the driveway in front of somebody's house was a full-size card rack with a sign on it going, free. Wow. So we picked it up and we walked home. Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, Susan's a phenomenal manifester. She, <laughs> I think she hasn't been able to manifest as the winning lottery numbers. <laughs> <laughs> You're still young. It's coming. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe tonight. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I, I have a retailer that's going to sell my cards. She wants to sell them as a draw it's a ladies store yep and it's ladies i'm targeting which is great and so she's gonna give me and she's not even keeping any commission or anything off of them good It'd be great yeah so yeah. you do have all your contact information on the back of the card okay yeah yeah i do yeah yeah we saw someone who had their name on it produced by 
and no contact information. Uh -huh. Had no idea how to get a hold. Loved the artwork. Had no idea how to find them. Did yeah. a Google search. They didn't come up. No. Yeah. Um. Anything else? I have a lot of questions, but they're all technical questions that I'm That's okay. running into. I, I switched my page to a business page on Facebook. And do you know Eventbrite? Yeah. Okay, so I can't post from Eventbrite to Facebook anymore. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with it, or I should go down a totally different rabbit hole. Um, recreate the event on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. And, and, then, then, and then link them to the ticket sales at Eventbrite. That's okay. The other way around. Okay. I'll do that. So in the, in the Facebook event, there is a tickets component where you put the URL to buy the tickets. And oh, and you're just, Eventbrite. okay. And Eventbrite is only giving me the URL code. They're telling me what to do without me knowing what they're telling me. <laughs> Okay, because I sell classes. I, I gave up trying to sell my art, which is silversmithing, uh, mainly jewelry. And so I gave up selling it and I love teaching it. So my, my potential students go to different venues and buy the tickets for the class. Right, yeah. So put the, um, if, if Eventbrite is selling the tickets for you, you put your event there, you get the link and you publish that link you can recreate the event in Facebook, um, create uh, a page on your website for the event yep. the link to Eventbrite. Uh, send out a MailChimp with the link to Eventbrite. Create the circle. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. I've spent days trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is this is what we do. Marketing is is. Um, is something that Susan and I have been doing all our lives, you know, in one form or another. And uh, uh, we've, I was telling Gord while you guys were on break that, you know, you got to make a lot of mistakes to find out what works. And we have had a fair bit of success. So we know a lot of stuff that works and we're, and we're always researching. I subscribe to about 175 newsletters that uncover everything from technology to marketing to um, cooking <laughs> or whatever, right? Any of my interests. So, um, and some of them are once a day, some of them are once a week, some of them are once a month. So my typical day consists of about 500 emails to go through. And I have filters set up. So if they're coming in from a certain place, I know that it's a newsletter that doesn't need my immediate attention. Um, I just automatically file it in my email into incoming newsletters. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Because my question is, how do you find the time plus do what you're doing yeah. to go through all of that? That's so okay. I spend, you know, I, I have a, my email is a Gmail address. Yeah. And my other email accounts, of which I have about 10, all get run through my Gmail. I'll get forwarded through to Gmail. And then Gmail's uh, filters pre-process all of that. So as they come in, if it's from certain people, um, like if it's my sister, my daughter, uh, Susan, they all go into a personal folder. Um, under my personal, I have a separate folder for family and friends. So people who I know I'm going to get emails from automatically get filtered into that. And they, they're high in my folder list in my email. Okay. Um, let me let me just get I'll share the screen with you in a minute once that uh, another thing about the online contests I noticed that the US has a large number of them compared to what we have in Canada. Uh, they're, they're very, very 
familiar and common in the U.S. side opposed to Canadian. Yeah. 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 yeah it'd be interesting. I, I I'm online with the Scottish um, guild people that do watercolor. It would be fun to enter one <laughs> with them if they would allow. I don't know. Okay, so there, there. can you see that, um, my screen? So if you notice over on the uh, left-hand side, I've got important start, personal, family, friends, to-do, <laughs> my clients, um, invoices, me, orders, payments, vendors, bug reports, MailChimp, Google notices, oh, test oh, kitchen newsletters, right? So those are all pretty much handled by automatic filters. Oh, perfect. And um, I use Thunderbird, which is an open source. It'll run on Mac, Windows, or Linux. Um, so I use that as my primary mail client um, on my Mac, but I also use it on my Windows machine um, and on my Linux machine, which I'm uh, retired. Susan just brought me water because I'm getting hoarse. Do you have a newsletter? Pardon Jeff? me? Do you have a newsletter yourself? No. A blog? Nope. Uh, on the comment about, um, I might get the name wrong, the um, Island Magazine that I'm just learning Susan's Island magazine. Island Arts Magazine. Island Arts Magazine. I had the first time I saw it was in print. And then the second time I had it online. And I was really impressed with both. I can't decide which I prefer. But the online version was very well done. I was impressed. Yeah, the nice thing about the online version was is it saves us an incredible amount of money every issue on not having a print. Yeah. Our readership went worldwide. We cut our advertising rates in half. Which I took advantage of. Thank yeah. you. And we're making more money. Yeah. Um, and you can share it. So I shared it to my family and my yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah. And thank you. Um, yeah. So we were always planning to go digital at some point. COVID and, and a change in, in Canada Post forced it forced us to oh. COVID we were going to go digital for the for the spring issue um, or for the summer issue and um, you know but our lead time on that was six weeks we had to be finished the magazine six weeks before, well we had to have our advertising deadline six weeks before publication because we had to then put it together <laughs> send it to the printers, get it into their queue for printing, then they had to ship it back and it was four days getting it back here. Mm -hmm. So we had a, so we were working on the, the June issue at the beginning of April. And, and then we had a week to do deliveries and it took me a, a day, better part of two, a day and a half to do the subs subscription mailings. Yeah. So, um, and then, you know, it took us four days to do deliveries up and down the island. And then we were mailing copies um, across Canada and into the States. So when we were, and then digital, and then Canada, put, and, and if we had any returned magazines where people had moved or the wrong address, um, we paid a buck and a half for each return. Wow which we maybe had one a year. Okay. Canada Post didn't like that model. So they changed it, they were in a chart and they, they talked to the Publishers Association, which consists of all the big publishers who mail out 100,000 copies every month. Mm -hmm. They wanted a flat rate. So Canada Post set a flat rate of $200 a year for return copies. Mm -hmm. well, that was more than what it would cost us to do our entire mailing. Mm. 
So we either had to quadruple the cost of our subscriptions from $25 a year to $100 a year or stop subscriptions. So what we ended up doing was we decided we would go straight digital. We refunded dollar for dollar any outstanding subscriptions and advised and sent letters to everybody, sending them a check, saying everything would be online. And our first publication that was fully digital was in June. Because we had done the trip to Tuscany, we had all, and we sent emails to all of them and everybody on our mailing lists and on social media, we had more readership in more countries. And now we're getting advertising coming from all over where before people thought it was strictly on the island. Right. So we changed our focus from West Coast artists to Western Canada. Good idea. Yeah. So, and even that may expand to Canadian artists or worldwide artists or whatever. Uh, we did an article on a potter in, in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, it's just after 12. Any other questions or we can wrap up? That's all I got. Yeah. Well, well, and some feedback. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. And um, I'm really impressed what I received. And um, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Because I know the work that's involved in a presentation. So I really appreciate your extra. Yeah, well, thanks, Jeff. Great. I want to wish everybody good luck. <clears throat> As follow up, if you, you have my phone number, you have my email, if you get stuck on anything, do not hesitate to call. I do not charge for talking. Other than on purpose. <laughs> if I have to do work for you, I, 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 I will bill you. Um, but you should, it has to take me more than 15 minutes. Um, so do you have any homework for us at all or no? Um, write your blogs, send me links, send Susan <laughs> press releases on upcoming events or mm -hmm. any important announcement. If you win a contest or an award, send us a press release to the magazine, the Susan at islandartsmag.ca. Um, we're here to help promote you. That's our job. Te giving you marketing classes like this at a, at, a, at a very reasonable rate is to help you improve your career. The more your career advances, the more mark advertising you're gonna do with the magazine. So um, this is just one of the ways that we help support that endeavor. So um, keep being creative, um, have fun doing it, and uh, love what you do and do what you love. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jeff. You, that, you can love me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to meet um, Kathy and Gordon. I think I've seen Gordon at the grocery store. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll say hi next time. Okay, we'll do. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.